I'm Gerson Sendano and thank you very much for joining me. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So if you are new as always, please uh, subscribe, uh, go to the notification or the bell, uh, you know, button and then click it. And then so that every time I post the video, you are notified. So thank you very much for joining me. Uh, today we are going to look at, you know, the issues of uh, green hydrogen. So Namibia is poised to become the greatest producers of uh, uh, green hydrogen uh, in, in Southern Africa. Uh, ultimately in Africa. So what does it mean for Namibia? What does it mean for uh, SADC? And what does it mean for Africa going forward? And what does it mean for the world? And what is it that other countries can learn from Namibia? With, and also we are looking at the issues of whether Namibia will be able or whether Namibia has the institutional capacity and whether Namibia has the techno technological capacity, you know, to execute this one out. So it will be very interesting to see going forward what will happen, whether the, the Namibia will really execute this, uh, this kind of, you know, mega, you know, projects. So, uh, you know, for starters, currently at peak, Namibia uses about, you know, 630, 640 megawatts of electricity and 40% of it uh, comes from South Africa. Uh, what does it mean now going forward? Why, you know, green hydrogen is the big thing in Namibia. Why do you think it's necessary that, you know, countries, uh, whether it be neighboring countries or just the rest of Africa should support Namibia in this major project? And what does it mean, uh, you know, for Africa going to the future? So this is what it simply means. You know, when we're talking about uh, green hydrogen, uh, so for a lot of people, you know, it sounds too scientific, too academic uh, for them to follow. But in reality, what we're looking at is clean energy. So uh, what it simply means, I'm going to demonstrate to you what is it about green hydrogen and why why namibia is pursuing this kind of uh, you know uh, mega project and what does it mean for, uh, for for the world in africa okay now let me just explain you know green hydrogen is simple what uh, this process involved is uh, maybe i should just show you first of all what you need is to execute it for you to produce green hydrogen first you need what is behind me you need water okay we we have water plenty of water behind me uh to execute this yeah but for a lot of environmentalists it's going to be an issue i mean namibia first of all is a dry country water is an issue here you know for you to 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 to, to extract water from the river it's going to be an issue but wait a minute there's another part that makes Namibia, you know, economically viable to pursue this kind of, uh, you know, project. We have the biggest desalination plant um, probably in Africa, and you can find it alongside Namibia, Namibia's coast. Now, we have the desalination plant, which means we can get water straight from the sea. Now, what else do you need to execute this kind of project? You need the sun up there okay you need the sun and what else do you need you need wind so there's available of wind in the atmosphere so wind is blowing uh you know on a daily basis so we got a lot of wind blowing around okay but how are we going to execute this it is very simple so it uses the simple technology let me just show you it uses the simple technology so what 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 normally happen is you have water okay so now this water you then um, you, you 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 put positive and negative charge of electricity. You put it in this container, maybe just to make it, to make it simpler for people to follow. Okay, but the question will be: uh, you want to protect the environment. How are you going to how are you going to you know produce that electricity? Of course, that's why we need uh, solar. We need sun and wind so wind turbines can then gener generate electricity or we can also get electricity from solar i mean you know namibia uh, can be you know namibia is one of the hottest country uh, countries uh, probably in the world you know at peak sometimes the temperature goes up um, you know beyond uh, it goes beyond 100 fahrenheit degrees or let's say just to make it simpler for people it goes beyond 40 degrees Celsius so it can be very hot so a good place to produce enough electricity now what you do is once you produce electricity from wind um, or from wind turbines or from wind and solar or sun then you bring the positive and negative charge into this water and then what happens 
so you electrolyze you electrolyze let me just make it simpler electrolyze uh, you use a process called electrolysis now electrolysis is where you have positive and negative charge in the water and then you put this electricity on so then you subject this water to electricity and then what will happen is um, so you will st you will then start harvesting you start to harvest uh, hydrogen so hydrogen and oxygen will be separated so, so as you know you know water uh, water is h2o so h2o what you're literally doing when through electrolysis or when you electrolyze is you separate hydrogen from oxygen i mean these are you have these are you, you know you have uh, hydrogen molecules you have water molecule i mean you have uh, oxygen molecules all molecules so what you do by subjecting these to electricity you then separate them you kind of like zap them so you separate uh, hydrogen from uh, oxygen and then you harvest oxygen for use in industrial i mean can can be used uh, whether in the hospital or you use it for other purposes maybe for combustion and bombs and other things uh, but you can also harvest hydrogen that's exactly what we need remember in this space uh, i think in some of the video if you go down you find uh, there was a video that i talked about um the availability of gases in the space now the the gas that you find in the space here you know the great the biggest is nitrogen okay about 78 percent of the gas in the atmosphere is nitrogen and then i also say 21 percent is oxygen then you have greenhouse gases okay this uh, these are things like methane carbon dioxide or cfc you name them they are there are a couple of a lot of a lot of small gases that you find in there okay but then the biggest is hydrogen now hydrogen is a very fascinating uh kind of gas if you like because hydrogen is, is readily available in our universe in our cosmos hydrogen is the greatest so it's readily available so you find where do you find hydrogen is in water okay the water behind me that's where you find hydrogen you remember hydrogen two hydrogen uh, uh, atoms or molecules uh, two hydrogen atoms with oxygen molecule then they form water now what you have is water now a lot of hydrogen is in the water then you take this water like like explain you subject it to electricity you electrolyze it and then you harvest you harvest hydrogen and then you separate oxygen from hydrogen now that hydrogen that you take what will happen is this hydrogen then can be kept in you can, can then be compressed or can be subjected to high temperature and not high temperature but low temperature to liquefy it so you can keep it you transport it in in, in big trucks uh, to neighboring countries countries you know so you can do that so you can transport it to neighboring countries uh because remember namibia only needs about 640 or uh, 650 megawatts now you're going to produce seven gigawatts uh, or about seven thousand you know uh megawatts so which means you will have about of six thousand megawatts that namibia will not use but then can then export to south africa you know south africa is in in, in energy quandary right now you know there is a lot of sh load shedding going on so that will be good uh for for south i mean south africa has been helping namibia for quite some time so, i mean wouldn't it be interesting if namibia for the first time has then to send electricity to south africa and also send some of the power to countries like zambia zimbabwe and other neighboring countries uh you know that would be very interesting good for africa good for trade and good for you know economic integration for sadek and africa at large so that's why it's imperative that namibia pursue this kind of dream so that is in that in short is what green hydrogen is all about so green uh, let's say hydrogen is readily available like i say so what you do then once the hydrogen is harvested you, you separate it from oxygen so we said oxygen can be used uh, for a lot of for, can be used in, either in hospitals or can be kept uh, in, in you know in hydrogen tanks and be used for different purposes now this hydrogen the hydrogen is the new energy so it can be used to power automobiles can also be used you know to produce electricity uh, what else can uh, we do? Remember, this is uh, climate change issues, the 21st world. Uh, we, you know, when we talk about climate change, we're also looking at the issues of fertilizers. You know, agriculture, ag agriculture will be changed. The face of agriculture will be changed in Namibia because currently the fertilizer that we use, uh, in most cases, you know, contribute to greenhouse gases by sending methane up in the sky and then tripping the heat, increasing the temperature here on Earth. So to avoid that, this hydrogen that you harvest 
you are part of it power automobiles part of it you produce electricity and part of it you can then take that hydrogen and then you extract nitrogen from the atmosphere remember there's 78 percent of nitrogen in the atmosphere so a lot of it now you need that nitrogen you combine it with hydrogen then you produce ammonia now ammonia can be used for medicinal purposes can be used also to produce you know new fertilizers fertilizers that will not uh you know contribute you know to the issues of climate change uh in the country so that's the advantage of you know uh this hydrogen not just that you produce electricity or power automobiles but also you can combine it with nitrogen you can extract nitrogen combine it and then you have ammonia which you can use then for fertilizer uh maybe i should tell you hydrogen is highly flammable but namibia has got the space so it's easy for us to produce these kind of things at an industrial scale uh you know we, we, the country is so vast that we are this we are we are specially distributed so therefore uh it's safer to keep some of you know some of these tanks that holds hydrogen so it's safer far away from people and it's always safer compared to countries that are highly congested now apart from that maybe just to um uh, just to conclude and tell you that you know um this hydrogen is the future forget about um what people are talking about i mean people are talking about uh uh tesla the use of uh, uh um, you know electricity not just electricity but battery power to power automobiles the future is now on hydrogen because that's the cleanest energy so we don't want to pollute our environment we don't want to contribute you know to global warming so that's why we have to embark on it i mean there are a lot of uh, uh you, you this is green green energy is what maybe i want to pursue you have others like gray energy blue energy i don't want to explain that those uh, too complicated for a lot of people but for now namibia is focusing on green energy so i told you the, most of these gases that we have, we use them for different purposes. You know, hydro, nitrogen, for example, apart from producing ammonia when you combine it with uh, hydrogen, uh, nitrogen and hydrogen, we use also nitrogen, you know, to avoid, uh, to make sure that the food doesn't get rotten. For example, you put it in Zimba chips, so the food does not get rotten. So once you pop that Zimba chips open, so what you find there is nitrogen. So uh, thank you very much for joining me. And uh, so I hope you have learned. I hope you have listened. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining me. And please don't forget to subscribe and like and share the video.